Okay, so today is the day before Halloween and it's time to get in the mood. So I watched a few of the Harlem Horror Nights movies. I noticed a theme with all of them. Ghostbusters from the 80s, Stranger Things inspired by the 80s, the area in arcade, arcades were cool in the 80s. The 80s are back and have been for a while. It seeped into our fashion, our shows, and some music genres. The ugly old things of the 80s are now either cool or turn into our given designer brands. According to writer Musk's research, fanny packs are one of the things that have come back. Originally, they were ski, ski gear from the 50s, and, in the, and the 80s was when they started becoming streetwear, cool streetwear, and got so, much, got so popular at the time by, in LA Times in 1989, it was as chic in the same way as leather jackets. Yeah, the closer it got to the new millennia, the more uncool it got. In. But it is back in modern times, in the form of crossbody bags. <laughs> um, oh, right. <laughs> the last line of Musk's article was, interestingly, all right, we get it, we're slave to fashion and you want in. Which is exactly what fashion people do. They just commodify, commodify the new nostalgia. And according to Heike Jens, professor, Professor of Fashion Studies, nostalgia used to be used for soldiers who yearned for, the, who yearned for home. Now it's more like just being sentimental towards parts of the past. Businesses sell things just new enough, yet that that you that it's new-ish, and but at the same time you also feel nostalgic for it. Writer Kurt Anderson considers it a cultural paradox. And yet secondhand stores exist, which are more like hunting for fashion rather than being a slave to fashion. The idea of finding vintage clothes in stores is part of highly intensified individual individuality, again, according to Jens. It breaks the idea that fashion is exclusively about the time now. But now, what's being watched, what's being watched recently can use the 80s as a setting. With the biggest examples of the past two years being uh, Stranger Things and um, It. And there's a few common things between both of their popularities. They both, they both use different types, the three, 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 three different types of nostalgia. Restorative, which is recapturing, revitalized, and imagined past. Reflective, which is for longing for what's lost. And video essayist Lindsay Ellis thinks there's a third, the third version that's being used now, deconstructive nostalgia. And both use variations of the three types. Stranger Things uses tons of references to the past, waters down a little bit of the bad sides of the 80s, and yet there's a government plot in there? I don't know. It involve, involves more of the decade's fears with the lost children <coughs> and all the paranoia involving it. It's interesting that these are both horror themed and even like, yeah, and even like a writer director of Horror and Horror Nights did explain that the decade used a lot of sci-fi. And again, it's different in each series. Major things uses plots inspired by the times, which and then there's the aliens that are there somewhere. Um, in it, there's the adults that don't care about anything that's going on, and whatever the thing is, representing stuff like ha hatred and bigotry, according to Ellis. Um, on a more cheerful note, the new sounds for mixing and remixing the 80s. Oh, wait. There you go. Uh, from remixing the 80s are interesting. Using, using uh, things from two genres. With Synthwave, inspired by video games and movie soundtracks in the 70s and 80s. It was, according to music journalist John Hunt, it was originally really niche and mostly for movie buffs, and it had ties to horror, sci-fi, and action movies. Uh, two examples of artists being Dance of the Dead is a duo that used to be in, used to be in different metal bands, and their whole thing is horror-inspired. Hunt suggests Miami Nights 1984, which is more of a driving fast mood, which is based off the old title, old name for it, Outrun, based off of a racing game. For a cute genre, how about a future funk? It was inspired by 80s Japan and their pop music, with albums inspired by, inspired by 80s and 90s anime, according to Gia Como Lee. People from different countries are all, all the same inspiration. America has Young Bay, Korea has Night Tempo, and artists are from all over too. Again, uh, uh, all 
these uh, all these different types of media call on the 80s in different ways. Fashion treats old styles for fun and profit. Shows use it as settings for homage and horror. Music is inspired by Eastern movies, Eastern TV, and Western movies. We are at the peak of obsession with 80s, and I wonder what parts of the 2000s will come back and be turned into horror or Halloweenified. Thank you. Thank you.